Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers and in today's video I'm going to help you stop taking bad photos. I've got five great tips that will really help you improve your photography and help you get those best shots. Now if you stay to the end I've got a bonus tip for you. You're actually going to get six tips for the price of five so keep watching. My first tip is to get your exposure and your focus right before you worry about your framing. You know, you can all sort out the framing afterwards in post-processing. Maybe a little bit of cropping is all that's needed. But if you've got a photo that's out of focus or it's incorrectly exposed, then it's pretty much something you might have to throw in the bin. Let's take a look at this example here. Now you can see, I was. this was one of the first times I'd shot a model and maybe I was a bit nervous, but uh, I was really concentrating on making sure that her face was in focus and you can see the framing is a bit out. The photograph is a little bit tilted. I probably have my camera twisted at an angle. And the other thing you can see is it's not perhaps the best composition from a framing point of view. But take it back into Lightroom and I could do a couple of little tweaks. Straighten it up as you can see here. And the other thing I could do is play around with different framing concepts. I decided to go to a, a more squarish style, a 4x5 style, and that gave me this finished photo. Looks much better, but if the exposure was wrong, the focus was wrong, that wouldn't have worked. Tip number two, make sure you understand the relationship between ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Now this is a triangle, the light triangle, that photographers often talk about. You really need to understand the relationship between all three. Now in my experience, the one that people tend to misunderstand the most is ISO because it's a bit more conceptual. It's really about how fast, the, in the old days, a film would have responded to light. And now it's about how fast, if you've got a digital camera, the sensor responds to light. And that's the thing that a lot of beginner photographers forget they can adjust. And normally you would adjust your ISO because you can't expose your photograph correctly. Perhaps you're doing it handheld, you need to have a high shutter speed, maybe a 50th or something, and you're already at your widest aperture. So what you need to do then is increase your ISO. If you don't understand ISO, then take a look at this video here and it'll explain more. Tip number three, use the rule of thirds. If you don't understand any other composition rules, then the rule of thirds is really a great one to have in your kit bag. You simply divide the frame into three and you position your key elements on one of the intersections of the frames. For example, if you're taking a portrait picture, then it's a good idea to get the head in the top third of the frame and maybe get the leading eye on one of the intersections. If you're taking a landscape, then it's better to split the horizon on a third of the way up or a third of the way down. You've got a very interesting sky, you might want two thirds of your frame to be sky. If you've got a very interesting foreground and uh, land, then you want two thirds of your picture to be about that foreground and land. Tip number four, change your position. Try and get that different perspective. Now, it can be something simple like putting your camera in a different orientation from portrait to landscape, but just doing simple things like moving around, lying on your back and looking straight up, or alternatively, looking straight down from a high vantage point. These will all make your photographs more interesting. So don't be afraid to move around, get down on your knees, get down on the floor, do whatever it takes to find that different angle to make your photograph more interesting. Tip number five, photograph what you love. If you're not motivated and excited to go out and take photos, you're never gonna take a brilliant shot. So start with doing things you love. It's good to challenge yourself to take other things. If you're always taking landscapes, you might find it good to go out and do some street portraits or some architectural shots just to mix it up. But you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And if you don't, that will really come through in your photos chances are you won't make the extra effort to make sure you get that great shot. I've got one more bonus tip for you. This is tip number six. 
Now, if you're taking pictures of people or a scene where there's a lot going on, it's a good habit to try and be able to look through your viewfinder and keep your other eye open. Let me show you what I mean. So if I'm doing that and I'm also keeping this eye open, I can actually track what's going on. So I can see if somebody is moving into my scene. I can perhaps also see if there's some big distraction going to come along. Particularly useful when you're taking pictures of people or you're taking pictures of action. The key thing is to go and practice now. Use the tips I've just given you and I'm sure your photography will improve. If you haven't seen it already, I've got a video about just one thing you can do to help you take better photos. I'll leave a link to it here.